In the last video, I finally had a chance to introduce what the P versus NP problem was. And what I want to do in this video is really kind of drill into that problem in a bit more detail and at a bit more of a fundamental level. Okay, so in general, if you can solve a problem efficiently, let's say you can solve a problem in polynomial time in the first place, in other words, that problem happens to be in P, then it will actually turn out to be the case that, that problem is going to be in NP since you can also verify the answer easily by virtue of the fact that you were able to solve the problem in the first place easily. Uh, and so the way you can think about it is you can, you can say that the set of problems in P is actually contained, uh, just a mathematical notation, contained uh, in the set of problems in NP. Okay, so we know that anything you can do in P, you can also do in NP. Okay? But now the real question remains, are there problems whose solutions can be verified, whose solutions can be verified efficiently, but where the problem itself cannot be solved efficiently. In other words, is NP, is NP contained in P? You know, are there problems in NP that, that are actually in P or that are not in P? Uh, or is it the case that any problem in NP also has to be in P? In other words, maybe to draw a bit of a picture, the question is, you know, what is the universe look like? We know for sure that um, if you looked at, imagine you had the space of, of, um, of all NP problems right here. Okay, let's say this is the space of NP problems. Okay, there's two scenarios. Either the case or the, the set of P problems is a proper subset of NP, or it might be the case that the, the set of P problems directly coincides, directly coincides with the set of NP problems. In other words, there's, there's no difference. They're the exact same uh, sets of problems. Okay, so we don't know if P is a proper subset of NP or if uh, P is actually equal to NP. We do know that everything in P is in NP, but we don't know if there's something that's in NP that may not be in P. Okay? Now, you may have some intuition regarding this problem. After all, I'm sure that, you know, I've always had this happen to me. Maybe you've had it happen to you. Uh, you can recall a time where, let's say, you struggled with some problem uh, and you couldn't solve it, and then someone either came by and, and gave you a hint or maybe they, they actually told you what the solution was. Uh, and as soon as they gave you that hint or they showed you the solution, the problem was like child's play. You were immediately able to verify it, knew the solution was correct, and yet you knew that you had a hard time coming up with the solution on your own. And so under that kind of intuition, it would seem like P and NP are, are different classes of problems. After all, just being able to verify something efficiently doesn't mean you can come up with it efficiently on your own in the first place. But what's amazing, what's remarkable, is that even though it intuitively seems like there are problems whose answers can be verified easily, but where the problem itself cannot be solved efficiently, it turns out we don't have any type of rigorous mathematical argument to substantiate that claim. We, we don't know one way or the other. Okay, and that really is the heart of the, the P versus NP problem, is being able to come up with a proof that they're either the same or different. It asks the question of whether the class of decision problems that's solvable in polynomial time coincides with the class of decision problems that can be solved in quote-unquote non-deterministic polynomial time. And maybe put a bit differently and maybe put into, into more intuitive language and maybe a little less formal language. Um, ultimately, there are just two complexity classes uh, containing decision problems. And let me actually just write this out explicitly so it becomes crystal clear um, what the P versus NP problem asks. So on the one hand, you have uh, decision problems. And let me just... In, in, in general, we always talk about decision problems and talking about uh, P versus NP. So you have decision problems such that um, uh, solutions solutions can be found efficiently, okay? And the problems for which solutions can be found efficiently when the decision problems is P, then you also have decision problems where solutions can be verified verified or checked efficiently, okay? Uh, and this is the class of problem that's known as NP. And the P versus NP problem asks whether these two classes are the same or whether they are indeed different. And again, it's not just enough to simply claim that they're the same or different. You have to be able to construct a rigorous logical argument, a mathematical proof that substantiates that underlying claim. Okay, now I think this is actually one of the most fundamental problems out there. You know, almost regardless of what discipline uh, you could you could think of, and the reason for that is if you if you think about it for a moment, 
you know, pretty much any interesting problem for, for maybe a bit of a loose, you know, for interesting is maybe somewhat subjective, uh, is actually, I think, an NP. Uh, and, you know, after all, if there's a problem out there where you're, you know, when are you looking for something where you actually don't know when you found it? Okay, so in other words, if you think about it, any interesting problem is a problem for which if you were able to solve it, you, you would know that you've solved it correctly. And if you imagine that every interesting problem has to kind of fall into this category where you, you actually check that you've got the right solution, then really any interesting problem out there is a problem that's an NP. Okay, and for this, again, very subjective, somewhat loose notion of interesting. Okay, uh, but what's interesting now is that, and, and going one step further, is that even though there are all these interesting problems out there, uh, there seem to be a lot of examples of problems, it turns out, where we can verify the answer efficiently, but where we don't yet know how to solve the underlying problem efficiently. And one example that we talked about, and this is a non-decision problem, was the, the factorization problem. You know, there was a case where we were able to verify the solution by simply multiplying. It's very easy to, to verify that uh, two numbers comprise a uh, non-trivial factor or constituents of, of a broader number. Okay? It's easy to verify that by, by taking the product of those two numbers. But given the, the number that's already the product, it's hard to come up with the constituent factors on your own, or at least there's no known easy way to do that. Okay, If I have the factors in hand, I can multiply them, but actually solving the problem itself appears to be a lot harder. And again, we have no, we, we have no known efficient way to factor or decompose a number into its factors, and we also don't have a rigorous proof, a rigorous mathematical proof, that an efficient mechanism is, is impossible. Okay? Now, aside from this factorization problem, there are actually many other problems that also seem to be hard to solve, but where the answers can be verified uh, quite efficiently. And I will talk about some of those problems in the next video.